Hello, Facebook. Hello, everybody. Jamie and Marcus here. Hello, hello. Good morning. What's today, the 31st? Today's the 31st. 31st, yes. July 31st. Uh, and it is about 11 ish, 11 a.m. If you're tuning in live on uh, on Facebook and uh, or replays on Facebook, and always the replay on YouTube, there's a notification yep. that we are live and active. We are just driving past the exit for Letchworth State Park, which we went to the other day. We did. Um, also known as the Grand Canyon of the East Coast, uh, 17 mile road takes you through the right next to the canyon. Um, really, really cool spot up here between um, Cuca Lake and Jamestown. It's like kind of located south of Buffalo, east, west of uh, Cuca Lake, uh, the Finger Lakes, and uh, south of Rochester, really. South of Rochester, yeah. yeah. South of Rochester, so. So, um, Thanks, it everybody. Feeds, feeds Lake Ontario. Yes. The stream that goes through there, the river that goes through there, feeds Genesee Lake. Genesee River. Genesee River, is that what it is? Yep, okay. The Genesee River. There's a dam there, so. And uh, yeah, so we did that the other day, hiked in there. Um, but we're saying goodbye. We're saying goodbye to Jamestown. We are. It's been an awesome summer. Um, Justin really had a great summer up there. Um, Justin, um, it ended the season last night um, for the Jamestown Tarp Skunks. Um, they lost last night four to three. Um, Justin pitched, I think about six innings. Yeah, tough um, game. Tough game, it was a tough game. Um, it's hard to, hard to watch your kid out there. <laughs> Um, very hard to watch your kid out there pitching and uh, and uh, and then watching him at the end of the game, uh, you know, losing a game. Um, you know, yeah. as a pitcher, I think he takes you, you take it very hard. Yeah, um, that was his first was. loss of the year. So that was a tough one for him. Um, and the first game of the playoffs, so it's an elimination game. Elimination game. So one game in, one game out. That's it. So. so. So yeah, so uh, the Tarp Skunks were eliminated um, from the playoffs, but Justin pitched a hell of a game. Um, he had a hell yeah. of a season. Uh, very proud of him. Very, very proud of him. And um, so yeah, so he's on his way home too. Yep, he's he's uh, going packing back. his car up. Most of the kids were leaving today. Um, he's packing up and he's probably a little behind us and he'll be home uh, for the next three and a half weeks before he heads back up to Canisius uh, for his sophomore year of college. So, um, but I gotta say, you know, last night the stadium was was busy. It was it was electric. Was a, it was electric. It was, in uh, there. It was yeah. It was really great energy. And um, you know, the team at the end after they lost, I mean, yeah, they were all bummed, but it was just so nice. They didn't want to leave the field. They didn't want to. You know, they didn't want to say goodbye, right? Yeah. And uh, I saw Justin, he actually walked over to the mound one last time to uh, play on the mound one last time, or, or stand on the mound one last yep. time there. Um, and, uh, you know, he gave it his all, and uh, unfortunately, you know, they, they didn't win. So. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we spoke to the coaches, great, great people up in Jamestown. Yep. I have to say, we are super blessed that our son was well taken care of up there this summer. Um, and he had a great experience. I mean, a wonderful experience. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the game could have gone any way in those last couple of innings. He could have. And it was just, you know, he gave up a home run. First time I've ever seen him give up an over-the-fence home run. Yeah. Give him a home run, kid hit it. Um, then um, it was really weird. Some, some calls were like, we didn't understand some calls. So, for example, there's a runner on first and second. Um, there was a runner on first. First and second. They... I don't know if they were stealing or not, but they threw the guy out at first, right? They threw the guy out at first, and and but they didn't really call it pro properly. But then all of a sudden, the ref, the judges, the umpires, the umpires. got together. The, ref, the umpires got together, and the home plate uh, ump all of a sudden says, "Well, the batter was actually hit, he by, was a hit pitch, by a pitch, which he should have stopped the whole running back and forth and called the play dead if the guy was hit by the pitch." Right. So we didn't understand why it took so long for him to say that the batter was hit by the pitch. When he let a rundown play go through and trying to run down one of the base runners, it was just odd the way that turned out, which in turn put another person on. Mm -hmm. Then the next batter, which would have walked on the next batter, so now it's bases loaded. Yeah. And what we thought was strike three, which appeared to be strike three, everyone in the field thought it was strike three. Justin was getting off the field. Every <laughs> the, the, the catcher dropped the ball, got up. Justin, the whole team got up, and because it appeared to be strike three, and all of a sudden the ump called it a ball. Called it a ball. And that changed the whole Holy. game right there, because then the next pitch was a 
double, yeah. which scored two, two runs. runs, and now you're at a four to three ball game. Four, a, four to zero. Four, 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 well, 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 that that, yeah. that made it that made it a four to three yeah. game as opposed to a three to two game in their favor. Right. Those two calls were in that same inning, so it's a little like weird why he waited for the a rundown to happen between the bases and then said, oh, no, 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 the batter was hit by the pitch. Yeah, it was weird. Then why'd you let the play go on? I didn't, I didn't, we didn't quite understand that. Yeah. So, um, and then the ump also called out the home plate ump. So, second base umpire calls of, of uh, when they were hitting, when James Hunter was hitting, called an outfield. The kid said he didn't, uh, they said the kid didn't catch it on the other team. Um, so, the second base ump said, oh, ball's in play, fair ball. And all of a sudden, the home base ump, who is what? How many more feet away right. from the... Said, no, 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 he caught the ball and overturned it right. from what the second base... And that kind of caused some controversy. So, I'm not sure it was gone. I'm not... Yeah. You, know, you always have calls Listen, like that during game. bottom line is they lost. Bottom line is they lost. So, you always have questionable calls. Um, but, yeah. But but just had a great season. Jamestown was awesome. Um, and, you know, we just look forward to... Being an to- umpire must be a tough position. I hope the training for these umpires is like you're going to get yelled at every game right, by right, because right, right. the umpires, no matter what side, you know, what team, there's somebody yelling at them bad calls. You should be in T ball, humping <laughs> T ball. There's always things like that. that so being an umpire is not really, a fun yeah. position. It I was, was it was it was electric towards the end. You yeah. know, the last couple of uh, the last couple couple of hits um, were were you know. Uh, the last couple of batters were. I yeah. Because we almost was going crazy. we almost had a walk off. We were in a great position on the ninth inning to have two, a walk off. I think we had two, two runners, ba- two runners on, or on yeah. like one out or something, and two outs. Yeah. And um, we were we were threatening in the ninth, yeah. and we could have totally, you know, you know and they, Jamestown is they're great for coming back like that walk off. So, are. but it ended up in a strikeout, and um, the game was over. So we're saying bye to Jamestown. Justin's saying bye to Jamestown. He'll probably be. Indiana or Wisconsin next Maybe year or something. Yep, another league There's next another year, league so. out in the Midwest. Um, step up league. Um, hoping step, they get yep. to Cape Cod as the final goal for that. Yep. So we're saying goodbye to that. We're on our way back. We'll be back about three ish. Um, so tonight in Ellenville, supposedly, supposedly, the streets are going to be closed. Streets are closed. Supposedly, I'm not sure if there's entertainment. I'm not sure what's going on because. Nobody really knows within the village. The communication is lacking, and um, the village manager says one thing, the mayor says another thing, um, one of the liaisons in town says another thing. So it's it's kind of really tricky what's going on. Um, some of the village officials thought the streets were going to be closed last night and open for dining. Other village officials said they're not being closed at all for the weekend. Um, but the reality is, I guess tonight the streets will be closed. Um, market on market was last night, which we yeah. missed because we were here. Definitely uh, recommend reservations. We were really, really busy last night. So please call ahead if you want to come in tonight. Um, uh, Unfortunately, if you're a larger party, we have to seat you all at once. Because what we're finding is happening, like if there's a party of six or a party of eight, that people always arrive first. Then the second car of people come or the third car of people come. And sometimes it's 20 minutes apart or 30 minutes apart. And unfortunately, we just don't have enough tables to let a table sit there because a lot of people just want to sit there and we'll wait to order, we'll wait to order, we'll wait to order as we're turning people away. So yeah. we had to start a new policy in these larger parties that the whole party has to be, which is normal in a lot of restaurants, by the way. The whole party has to be there for you to be seated um, because we're flipping tables and we're busy. Like last night was probably one of our busiest Friday nights I can remember. Yeah. Um, like really, really busy. So great job to our staff yeah. as well. So our staff did a fantastic appreciate job. Appreciate that we were able to jump in the car and head out when Justin was pitching. So last minute, yeah. Last minute. So uh, thank you to to our staff. Um, We've got a great team. We do. Uh, Monday night we have a wine dinner, Spanish yep. wines. Uh, just a reminder, if you would like to join us. Um, please call now. Um, it looks like we have a lot of um, large parties, and on we, Monday night. On Monday night, okay. And we also have our wine dinner. Um, I think we really only have room for two, maybe four more people for the wine dinner. Okay. Um, so if four you want, Spanish wines, one dish, twenty nine ninety nine. Yep. So we're open tonight. We open at three o'clock. We're open tomorrow at three o'clock. Um, and I think that's it, right? Yep. Thank you to the people who reached out to me. Some of you reached out to me on our building um, inspector dilemma that we're having right now with some of the storage and propane tanks. Some of you reached out to me, private messaged me. I actually spoke to people on the phone about it. And um, we're having a problem with our storage next door in the alley. 
Uh, the landlord across the street offered us storage, uh, really inexpensive storage in his basement um, that we might take him up on that um, just to get some stuff out of our alley down there. But one of the main problems is the, the code enforcer, the fire inspector, didn't message me back. I called and left a message because I really wanted to find out how much propane I'm allowed to store. So if you have a restaurant or a business or a home, you're allowed to have so much propane on your property outside based on your square footage. So it's not illegal to have it. It's just you're allowed to have it. And um, one of the main reasons, um, like when you go to a gas station, you see those propane tanks that are inside those cages. Those cages are there to protect the propane because they're afraid a car's going to hit it. That's the main thing. Those things are in those big cages. We have a big cage in our alley. And, of course, there's a car. And cars aren't going in our alley. Cars don't drive down our alley. So right. it's totally safe where it's at. Um, I think just being a little nitpicky with us and uh, trying to uh, stretch their powers beyond um, um, well, beyond what they're supposed to be doing. And so I've asked out, them yeah. to say, how much propane am I allowed? Right. And I'll comply with that easily because right. we're allowed to store propane. Um, and if we didn't have the cage, we'd be throwing propane tanks everywhere around, which wouldn't be safe. So it's one of those dilemmas. But we have to, we had to look for alternative storage for some of the things that we have. Um, all the table, extra tables and chairs, which we think we got next door, across the street, um, in his basement there. So, um, thanks for everybody who reached out on that for us. Um, anything else, Jay? No, I think that's it. I hope everybody has an awesome day. Um, it's nice uh, up here in um, in Western New York. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's nice up here. Hopefully, it's nice when we get home. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks everybody for watching. We appreciate it. And we will catch you soon. Sounds good. Have a great day, everybody.